Okay, welcome to our core team meeting in April. Uh, it's been, yeah, the last meeting we had was uh, to kick off the hackathon two months ago, and I think the world's turned upside down a bit like since then, but hopefully everyone's doing well and, and safe. I think I talked to a number of you either on the phone or Slack or Gitter. Um, you know, Hopefully things are things are going okay, and uh, appreciate you guys like responding to my like comments on like issues MRs or responding to my Slack messages when uh, when there are obviously other things going on. So uh, yeah, we obviously skipped the meeting last month. We thought we'll get get a chance to meet face to face, but that uh, that obviously didn't want, didn't happen. Uh, but have uh, several items that uh, want to go over. Um, and then uh, have a uh, item under any other business under number four, but it, we can certainly discuss other topics as well. Um, let's see, let me go into the presentation mode. Um, so first is uh, a scale retrospective. Uh, this is an event about a month and a half ago. It's, it seems like a world away when we actually had events. And I'll talk about new uh, efforts to move a lot of the events uh, online or virtually, because obviously we're not going to be able to have a lot of uh, traditional events uh, at a location face to face. Uh, so GitLab team, uh, marketing team has actually been looking at this for a while and uh, wanted to support this with meetups and, and hackathons uh, for wider community members as well. And there's been a, oops, sorry. Advance too far, too fast. Uh, talk about uh, new core team members. Uh, we have a confidential issue that that's open that uh, that's being discussed. Uh, we'll quickly talk about that, and then uh, in time remaining, we can talk other topics besides the next meeting in in May as well. Um, uh, before I, I go on, like any other topics that people want to add here before I continue or we'll plow through. Uh, then we, I guess I can get started. Oops. Ray, can I ask yep. about uh, yeah. the, the virtual contribute that is going to happen uh, in April? Uh, uh, yes, I don't have a ton of information on that. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I haven't, like I've been out for a few days, so I haven't been like on top of things on uh, virtual contributes. So I think like if things are uh, being like discussed in, in like a Slack channels or on issues, but yeah, I don't think, uh, I think there are like there's some talks that are being lined up in, in April. Uh, Remy, I don't know if you know more than I do, but I've sort of been so away from that for the, for the, for at least a few days. Um, but, uh, happy to follow up on that on Slack or, or other avenues, but good question. I'll, I'll make a note of that too, to, for myself. Okay, um, so uh, the first agenda topic, uh, I mean, scale, uh, this, this is an event, uh, this is the 18th edition of an open source event that's been happening in, in the LA area. Uh, and it was actually, my first uh, participation at the event was last year. I just went there as an attendee. Uh, GitLab also had a booth for uh, in the expo area, so I helped out a bit, but I, I just mainly went there to uh, see what the event was about. And uh, I mean, I really liked the event when I attended last year. It was pretty similar to FOSAM that a lot of you are already familiar that I'm, I'm a big fan of. So we organize a GitLab Community Day on a Friday. Um, and I mean, we had a room for, I mean, it was a decent sized room for about hundred people for, uh, for half a day in the afternoon. Uh, and then I mean, basically addressed two main topics. One was basically introduce all the programs under the community relations team, not just for code contribution, but for, for evangelist program, open source program and education program. So you saw uh, you see a picture of all my colleagues, um, uh, you know, present their programs to, to the audience. And then we also had um, uh, uh, Francis Potter from the sales team that actually walked through all of the DevOps stages of, of GitLab. Uh, so basically gave an overview of not only of our product, but also community programs. Um, and because of, I mean, this is before the state was basically shut down uh, because of COVID-19. 
Um, but already things were, I mean, people were already starting to cancel their trips. So the number of people that were in the room or uh, I think we had about 40 to 45 people in the room. Uh, I mean, throughout the whole like afternoon. Uh, so it wasn't, uh, I mean, it wasn't that bad attendance wise. Um, but the room was able to fit about like 100 people. So it was about half full. And when we sort of polled the attendees, most of the people were from the Los Angeles area. Um, because I think a lot of the people, uh, like a lot of the companies were already starting to like to cancel all the travels and conference attendance. Uh, I was told that typically 15% uh, of the people come from outside of the United States, but I'm guessing it was a lot lower than that. Uh, it was mostly what, what the sense I got was a lot of, a lot of the folks were local. And I mean, I know Ben's on the call. I mean, thank you, Ben, for, for coming over and, and joining us uh, in the afternoon. It was definitely great having you there. And it was definitely great having, we're able to like introduce some of the GitLab heroes that were in the room, not just Ben, but we had a couple other like the heroes that were in attendance. Uh, so we were able to um, point those people out. And then Ben, you also helped uh, people with, because uh, we also had like an hour workshop where, uh, you know, we walk through different areas where community members can contribute. And then, I mean, four people actually uh, submitted their first MRs uh, to fix some of the documentation. So I sort of listed on, on the on the Google Doc. Um, so I want people to be familiar with like, you know, um, you know opening an MR and, and getting those reviewed at Merge. Um, so, I mean, so that was, that was pretty cool. I mean, four, four new contributors, uh, were there. And then I know Ben, you had to help like one or two people out. So I appreciate you being there for that. Uh, if you want more details, uh, there's a retrospective. If you click on the retrospective link, uh, so all, I mean, pretty much all of us that were there, we had sort of pros and cons of how the event went. Um, I mean, assuming uh, the like events events continue uh, like it has in the past, like next year, uh, this is something that we probably definitely want to go back to. Uh, a good way to sort of engage uh, with community members, not just in Southern California, but if people are traveling, uh, they definitely get a lot of people from uh, outside of California as well. So something that we'll I mean, strongly consider. And then I mean, if you want more photos, I added a link to the Twitter moment there um uh that you can check out um um ben did you have anything else that I, do you think i missed anything or feel free to add anything that that uh, i forgot about but no i mean i think overall it was good um yeah. you know minus the fact that it was starting to be affected by the virus outbreak yeah yeah but uh yeah i mean it was uh i mean i, I, I the one the keynotes, I mean their keynotes are on like a Saturday and Sunday. Like the Saturday keynote was like absolutely full with standing room only. And then like Sunday was pretty uh was starting to already starting to thin out. Uh and then I've never been to a conference where like the conference schedule was just being like adjusted like throughout the event because uh speaker weren't able to travel and cancel they had to cancel their plans. But um yeah i mean despite that i we i mean we can definitely see the um uh the type of audience that, that typically attend the event uh so we'll uh we'll plan on going back with assuming things go, go back to normal but um yeah i mean let 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 us know if you have any questions I mean, especially if you look through the retrospectives feel free to comment directly there and and let me know if you have any questions cool all right so Moving right along. Um, so uh, hackathon in a box, and I think I talked about this. Uh, I can't remember whether it was in January or February. Uh, what what I started doing late last year was sort of creating a, a package um, or, or content that people can use if they sort of want to organize their own hackathons during like meetups. Uh, so I was thinking mostly like you know pretty much all face to face. People might organize. We have you know, 30 plus meetups that are happening around the world. And uh, one of the topics could be, you know, encouraging people to contribute to GitLab. And I know Tucker, you've done that successfully a few times in Japan. Uh, so wanted to provide a tool to sort of replicate that um, and call the hackathon in a box. Uh, but with the recent events, obviously we're kind of pivoting towards uh, focusing on like a virtual events. Um, I mean, a lot of marketing folks are working on this in, in GitLab. 
And we wanted to sort of focus on virtual events, not just for industry events, um, but also for meetups as well. Because so John's done a great job of sort of pivoting his meetup programs to support uh, virtual meetups. And you can click on that link. Uh, you'll see the new virtual meetups page. And, uh, you know, as we did at scale, uh, we kind of piloted like a hackathon in a box at a Hamburg meetup that actually happened the same time as, as a hackathon in February. Um, I'm not sure if anybody actually made contributions, but David, myself, and John were able to sort of uh, attend the meetup for about 30 minutes. I think their meetup was like a 90 minute, but we carved out like a third of that time to encourage people to contribute. Uh, so and the content material was there. So we just want to make this also available as a tool for, for a virtual meetup. Uh, so the first uh, link there is, uh, I just made a handbook update. I just asked uh, for a review from John and, and David um, uh, uh, to, to update the handbook to include uh, uh, a section on a virtual hackathon. And a couple of things I wanted to point out. Uh, I mean, the, obviously the goal, I mean, I, you know, we're still going to have like the quarterly hackathons like we've been having uh, over the past couple of years. Um, this is sort of, sort of to supplement like what's going, what's happening every quarter. And then, um, you know, the expectation is to rely on wider community members to organize this as they're doing their own meetups in their, in their locations. Uh, I mean, John or myself will be able to support and, and uh, I mean, provide materials that are needed to, to support uh, the virtual meetups, but we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to be that hands-on. We'll provide the necessary support like John does with the, the meetups. And the main target will be like a first time contributors, like a lot of people who've never done it before. So we wanna keep things simple. And then we, uh, we even wanna make the issues like pretty uh, simple enough for people to work on like we did at scale, like a simple documentation fixes. Those are a good way to sort of get people get started. So that will be the focus. Uh, we'll still have the quarterly hackathon, but this is just, uh, a tool tool for wider community members to do something uh, uh, locally or or virtually if they want to organize something. Uh, in the first event, um, I mean, I, I mentioned that the the expectation is to have wider community members sort of organize this, but sort of to kick things off, uh, I'll be I'll be the first host, uh, and we'll do this uh, in about two weeks on April 29th, and you'll see an issue there. Um, so uh, just um, so we'll uh, get that going and then uh, hopefully we'll get other uh, community members uh, express interest in, in organizing something like this going forward. Um, yeah, because, you know, even meetups, um, you know, what we noticed uh, in early March was that a lot of like a in-person meetups were getting canceled because facilities weren't available, people weren't going into work uh, or travel is being severely restricted. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the case in, in most places around the world right now. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes and, uh, you know, the next couple of meetings we'll, we'll, you know, we'll provide an update on how, how things are going. Um, any, uh, questions or comments? Or, uh, I mean, Takuya, I, I mean, you've been very active in organizing meetups in, 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 in Tokyo area. I, I assume like meetups are not like happening in, in, in person anymore for a while, right? But. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I assume like you're not able to organize like meetups like in, like in office locations or, or, or buildings, so. Uh, yes, uh, we we, uh, we can have a meet, uh, in person meetup. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So hopefully, you know, I don't know how successful it was will be uh, in in a lot of places, but uh, I mean, if you're interested in sort of piloting this as a as sort of a virtual thing in Japan, I mean, I mean, let us know. And then, okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thanks. All right, so yeah, any questions uh, or comments? I mean, even on the MR, if you wanna provide your feedback on that, that would be, that would be appreciated. Um, cool, all right, so moving right along.
so new core team members. So, and the, this is one of the discussions that Ben and I had uh, while we're at scale, because uh, we, I mean, we both realized we haven't added a new member in probably well over a year. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of good uh, contributors that have been contributing to GitLab um, since that time. And then quick reminder in the process, I just basically cut and pasted these sentences from the core team page. Uh, I mean, current members like to nominate a new member from the wider community and with the confidential issue that, that that's been open. Uh, and, uh, you know, there will be like a two week window where people can either vote or uh, raise any concerns or objection if there are any concerns within the two week period. If there are no objections within two weeks and there are at least two positive votes, then, you know, I basically reach out to that candidate and then see if they would be willing to join the core team. So that's, that's sort of the uh, uh, reminder in the process. Um, and the, and I, Georgie opened the issue, I think sometime last week, and right now the due date is set to 22nd, but I think there's been discussion about extending that because uh, you opened it uh, like right before the Easter holidays, right? Mm -hmm. So Exactly. I think it's, okay. it's wise to extend this for two more weeks, just to make sure okay. that uh, most of the core team members to get to see this in time. Right, yeah. I mean, in the time. last time I checked, like maybe it was about an hour ago, I think there, there were already like a three or four votes. Uh, so I think about roughly half the people already voted, but yeah, one or two weeks, I think that's completely fine. Uh, I mean, the other thing I, I think I mentioned this uh, in a different issue is that, uh, you know, we could obviously invite like more than one member, um, you, you mm -hmm. know, if, if there are other deserving candidates. Um, so, I mean, if, if people think of other people that, that you think would be a good fit, I mean, feel free to open up like another issue and then we can, we can discuss it there. So, cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Two questions here, right? Ray yeah. And, uh, Go ahead. Did you have feedback from the request to replace Winnie from the, from the team members? Uh, the no. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thanks for the reminder. Yeah. I haven't gotten like a, uh, I need to follow up on that discussion on Slack because mm -hmm. uh, I don't think, uh, I mean, I got one feedback from ZJ, but I think he was, uh, I think he re actually recommended somebody that's from like from the wider community. Uh, but I, mm. I need to follow up on that. If I don't, I mean, I've got a couple of names that, that I've heard from people, but I, I wanted to like open it up to, to the wider uh, members of the company, uh, but I can start certainly start reaching out to folks. Or I mean, George, if you want to chime in there and and encourage other people to uh, come forward with candidates, so we appreciate it. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, maybe to make it clear what's what's included. I mean, being a core team member for the team and why I need this. Maybe it could right. help. Uh, yep. Yeah, and and the second question is about the the scale uh, the scale event. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, was the what about the the audience? What the diversity of the audience? Did you have contributors from uh, uh, mostly males, females, something? Uh, yeah, I mean, Ben, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I I don't think the uh, I mean the diversity of the audience wasn't whole lot different from te traditional technical conferences. It was, you know, I mean, a lot of, I mean, I think at some point I counted like a how many female attendees were there. I mean, there were, I mean, there, it was, it was more than a few, but it's, it was probably definitely less than like 10 or 15% is my guess, if I remember correctly. Uh, I mean, there weren't that many, uh, um, yeah, not, not that I recall. I mean, yeah. I mean, Ben, do, am I remembering that correctly? Or I don't think it was any different than other tech conferences that we typically go to, but in terms of diversity of attendees. Yep, I would say diversity wasn't great. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I mean, the interesting thing, I mean, this is sort of off the topic and this isn't like the question you asked. Like one of the things that we asked to the audience, because I asked like how many people are from the area and the other question I asked people were, how many people already have a GitLab.com account? And I think like 100% of the people said yes, which which kind of shocked me. 
uh, to be honest. Like, I mean, I expected a high percentage of people, but I didn't expect like close to 100% of people having already having like GitLab.com account. So that made the hands-on exercise a little bit more like we're able to kind of jump right into it. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, diversity, I think it's, it's just a, it's, it, it's a challenge. Um, so, I mean, there were a lot of like a female presenters in other sessions that I attended, but in the room that we're in, unfortunately, during, during our you know, community day, it wasn't, it wasn't that stellar. So. Okay. Thanks for the questions though. Um, so a, a final thing on uh, the core team membership, uh, I mean, this is sort of the question that I wanted to ask, because uh, right now, the, what we have is, uh, you know, if there's a single objection, then it can block a candidate from becoming a, becoming a core team member. And I think this was fine when the core team was like relatively small, like they had like a four or five people. Uh, but as we're growing, I, I was concerned that it, is it going to be, is this going to be, you know, potentially discourage having a, having a di diverse group of people in, in the core team? Because, uh, I mean, it, um, I just wanted to like, you know, uh, ask people like what your thoughts are. I mean, if, if we wanted to like move away from like, you know, a single, single objection blocking a candidate, we could, we can change a rule so that, you know, we required like a two third majority of people to vote yes, uh, rather than, rather than having like a single, uh, single like uh, dissenting opinion sort of block the candidate from becoming a member. Um, you know, I don't think this has been a huge issue, but uh, I, I just wanted to sort of raise this and see what people's thoughts are. Um, like no opinions or that seems good yeah yeah i mean i mean if people are okay with this i mean i think the easiest thing to do is i mean we don't have to decide now obviously on the call like i can start an mr to sort of update the core team handbook and suggest some text and see what people think and if there are concerns with, with what I'm proposing, I think that's a, probably a good way to discuss it there. But, sounds perfect. Right. So I think it sounds good. Um, yeah, I think if we do it, you know, somehow similar to how we would nominate someone or, you know, MR mm -hmm. works too, we could vote on it there. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, let me start a like an MR. I mean, it, I don't think this needs to be private. Like, I mean, I, we can have a public MR to sort of discuss this. And uh, if there are no objections, then we can merge it into the core team page. And I think that that might sort of make things easy. Cool. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, whoops. All right, so, oh, Hannes added a note here, which is cool. Um, um, so, I mean, first thing, I, I assume this is gonna be quick. I thought combining the, the kickoff of the hackathon and the core team meeting worked out pretty well. So I was gonna to propose to do the same thing in May. Um, uh, Cause I thought, I mean, they brought a lot more people to the core team meeting. Uh, and people that are not on core team members of the call. So if there are no objections, I'll just plan on um, combining the kickoff with the core team meeting next month. I, I thought the meeting was more interesting as well. So cool. And then I don't think Hannes is on the call, um, but let me go to that issue that he opened that I commented on. And um, yeah, I think he was suggesting like a badging for, for Hackathon. I had some couple of clarifying questions that I wanted to ask. Um, I, I mean, I'm assuming like people who get MRs merged during a Hackathon get some sort of a badge, um, but I'll wait for uh, Hannes' feedback on that. But if people have any like a strong opinion on this, because uh, I added in the comment, because interestingly enough, about a month ago, I was listening to a podcast from uh, featuring actually John O'Bacon, and then he actually didn't have a very high opinion of badges because there are just too many of them, and be, people may not value them as much as they used to. Uh, I'm not sure if I 
hundred percent agree with that, but I thought it was it was kind of interesting um, uh, uh, that uh, that he wasn't quite sure if badgings were very effective anymore. But I don't know if people have any, any thoughts or uh, I mean, obviously we'll wait for Highness's like the clarification. But do people have any thoughts on this? Or I mean, I don't have like a I don't think I have a strong opinion one way or the other. Um, because I think he opened, like he, like he says, he opened a similar issue on heroes. Like, uh, I don't know. We, I, I know we have a graphic for the heroes, but I don't know if that's like, you want to call that a badge, but people have any strong, like a thoughts or opinion on this or. So I don't necessarily have a too strong of an opinion, but I guess mm -hmm. my thing is like, why should someone get a badge for participating in the hackathon versus just mm -hmm. a badge for contributing to GitLab in any way, any time? Right, right. Yeah, because we sort of, I mean, I don't want to call this a badge. Uh, I mean, obviously, I have a top contributor, contributors page, which features many of you on, on this call. Uh, so I have this like a little icons for superstar, star, and, and below. Uh, I mean, I don't, I mean, I didn't necessarily call that a badge, but that's sort of the only place where we have sort of a recognition uh, and an icon for people that have regularly contributed. But um, yeah, so yeah, I think Ben, you bring up a good point. Like if we create a badge for hackathons and do we need to have, we probably need to create a lot more or a lot of different badges for people that have been contributing on a regular basis, right? I think that's, uh, that's, is that the, is that what you're suggesting, Ben? Or right? I mean, I guess yeah. uh, in a way, a hackathon is a seems like a good time for us to like encourage people to participate. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we also want people to participate all the time. So right, right. You know, it, it like because I, I think some people probably end up participating in the hackathon sort of accidentally. Um, mm -hmm. Right. You know, just because the timing lines up. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, there, there are, there is definitely some of that. Like, I mean, I'll get comment about they didn't even realize that the hackathon was going on, and it's just a happy accident. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. So I, I, I definitely see your point, and and tend to agree with you that we don't want to devalue the people that are contributing on a regular basis outside of uh, quarterly events. Oops, I was about to edit a slide. Yeah, George, I didn't want to forget about the virtual uh, contribute. So I'll follow up on this offline. Thank you, Ryan, was about to ask. Yeah. yeah. Cool. OK. Uh, any other topics or any, anything else? I've also added a question about, not sure about the virtual, is if this is related about with the virtual hackathon, about the mm -hmm. guidelines from the team to host a virtual GitLab meetup. Meet I know it was uh, a GitLab meetup in Greece was about to happen one of these uh, days, but uh, uh -huh. does the GitLab team provide any guidelines how to host a virtual GitLab meetup? Yeah, is I mean, let me go back to the page. There should be a checklist uh on like a hosting virtual meetups mm -hmm. uh and i know there's like a checklist on yeah there's a checklist if you click on this link and it takes you to i think john's like a handbook mm -hmm. page so yeah so there is a definitely a checklist that you can you can take a look at and then this is what it was looking uh, for, yeah. yeah and then if you open up an issue uh and then just flag john and then i mean I mean, you probably you probably did the same thing for the for the original meetup as well in Greece, right? When you open mm -hmm. you open an issue, yeah, John Ping Ping being that issue, yeah, yeah, right. So, yeah, I think the process is uh, it's probably not a whole lot different, but he has a little bit more details about like mm -hmm. the conferencing tools, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, so cool. Hopefully, yeah, that was relatively easy. Yeah. Cool, you bet. So. Yeah, I mean, John got this up and running like last week, which was awesome. So, yeah. cool. Uh, anything else? 
Like, are people surviving being indoors all the time? But hmm. I'm like really tired of running the same trail like over and over again. I'm, I don't know what else to do, but uh, hopefully people are uh, staying healthy and, and sane. Like, you know, hopefully things will start to get back to normal soon. Hopefully. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks everybody for your time. It's a pleasure as always. And uh, we'll, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure we'll, t we'll, most of us will talk before, but uh, at the latest, we'll, we'll talk when we kick off the hackathon next month. So, cool. cool. All right. Thanks everybody. Have a good Thank day. You. Yeah. Bye. Have a good day.